What's up, y'all? Welcome to Kalima Cam episode three. Ramadan Mubarak to you guys. It's the third day of Ramadan and I have to say it hasn't been too difficult for me this month. How about you guys? I'm feeling really blessed this month. I hope you guys are too. For those of you who don't know, Ramadan is an Islamic month of fasting where we don't eat from sun up to sundown and it teaches us self-restraint. And I'm so excited to get the rest of these days knocked out. I also have this piece of art behind me. It's actually one of my personal pieces. I'm still an amateur, but I've been playing with different colors and I'm really loving the effects that I'm getting. It's one of my first pieces and it's probably one of my favorite pieces as well. Just to let you know a little bit about the look, we got um, some stolen earrings from my friend Hasina. Hey Hasina, like you girl. And um, just the natural hair. Loving my hair, darling. Always rocking the natural look. This ring, it's an authentic stone um, I got from downtown St. Petersburg, um, Daggio's. It's so cool, I love it. Kind of goes with the lipstick. Um, my makeup today is a mix of Mary Kay, L'Oreal, but the lipstick is brand new. It's um, MAC Lady Danger, and I love it, but I'm not really happy that it's looking kind of red on screen. It's not red. It's more of an orangish red, so it's kind of like that bright, subtle, matte look, and it is actually a matte lipstick. As far as the hair goes, um, I've pretty much worn extensions for the past couple of years. I can't lie, I do miss my extensions, but it's always nice to let your hair breathe every now and then. I've been using a lot of Carol's Daughter products. She has really good moisturizing products, so if you guys need to keep your hair moisturized, definitely look into that. I also learned recently that too much shampoo can dry your hair out, so definitely focus on the moisturizers. It'll give your hair that awesome texture. You guys have to be able to love the skin that you're in and love everything that's God-given about yourself because that's the only thing you can take to the grave. It's so funny, I think sometimes, like, what would some females do if the world came to an end? There's so many fake products, fake eyes, fake lashes. I mean, you guys already know. Would they be able to adapt? Would they be able to embrace what they really have? I got some hot topics for y'all today. I am so excited to get started. First off, let's jump right into Kim Ye and that racism episode. I was really happy to see that sort of exposure to the lifestyle that many live every single day, including myself. I definitely think that Kim being a public figure, she's getting it a little bit more because people think that because she has so much power and so much publicity that everything she does is a reflection of maybe the Caucasian culture. Um, obviously, I don't know too many African Americans or Caucasians that have been with African Americans have the sort of racist acts to the extent that she has. I mean, if you guys haven't seen the episode, I was even surprised. Her entire trip to Vienna was just racism land, pretty much. The country kind of was given a bad name in this episode. I mean, Kris Jenner's entire like valuable things in her luggage was taken. I mean, they cut her luggage up and just took all of her most valuable items. Other than that, from the interviews to the plane ride home, she was just constantly attacked. Um, in her interview, the fellow comedian that was being interviewed was making jokes about niggas in Vienna, which is obviously a reference to Kanye's song, Niggas in Paris. And 
even though we understand that that's an easy title to be taken the wrong way it was pretty evident that he was trying to make a big joke out of um her being there in vienna that's why i never use the n-word it's too touchy of a subject and it can be taken too many different ways at the end of the day your husband does have a song that says niggas in paris and he's just saying we got niggas in Vienna, and people don't even consider niggas to be black. They consider niggas to be anyone. So how do we know if his intention was to say, oh, niggas as in black people? But I think that um, it's safe to say it was taken in the racist sense because there was a man in blackface there. Another great thing is that in the episode, they talked about the history of blackface. I wasn't even aware of this history. Um, I know that, of course, African Americans were not allowed to be on screen, and in a production it was illegal at the time hundreds of years ago but i wasn't aware that caucasians would dress in blackface in order to portray the african-american characters in the production and it was always a comedic type of performance making fun of an african-american kim and chris were so appalled Kim started to write a blog because I think that she was just in fear for her own daughter. She was saying that she hopes that North never has to go through that, which I can tell you right now, Kim, you're just going to have to get used to it. Unfortunately, because we live in a society, just like Chris says, that's moving backwards sometimes. In Kim's trip to Vienna, we did make a big step backwards. Every African American, whether you're light, whether you're dark, you're going to go through some sort of racial profiling, which Kanye even says in his concert. Kim had mentioned that he always kind of brings up the conversation of racism. He says even to the point of when you're shopping and someone says, can I help you? It's racial profiling. I mean, I know you guys have probably heard of Oprah shopping and them actually telling her to leave the store because she there's no way that she would be able to afford a $25,000 purse. And, you know, of course, they found out, oh, this is Oprah, who made the incident completely public and brought light to the situation. And that's why I'm so happy that Keeping Up With The Kardashians was able to kind of contribute to that. Because, unfortunately, we do live in a world and a society where people are still just miserable and, and judge people completely by their exterior. Which we all know is unfortunate, because when you get to know people, you really realize that they're not all the same. God says he didn't make one person the same, so what does that tell you? Don't judge a book by its cover, you never know who you're talking to. Alright y'all, moving on. Dr. Dre and his $3 billion check. Yes, baby. I'm so happy for him. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't really know Dr. Dre like that. I know that he's an awesome producer and has brought some of my favorite artists into the game but he's obviously a genius entrepreneur he sold beats by dre to apple and yes she does have an apple product i am totally looking forward to our new audio systems and all of these devices apple really stepped their game up and apple's about to have no competition dre also just bought his brand new mansion of course you, i mean i'm sure you can imagine it's absolutely gorgeous and i'm sure this is not going to be the last of big purchases that we'll see from him all right y'all moving on to the bet awards <sighs> two words august alcina oh my goodness i never knew how fine he was until this award show i loved the one single and i love it that is my song but not only did i fall in love with his face i fell in love with his personality in that acceptance speech he was so humble and so passionate and so appreciative and as you may notice a lot of celebrities seem to be very appreciative in the beginning of their career always thanking god always thanking the fans being near tears and then towards that t time in the career where they become so used to it it kind of fades away i hope to god it never fades away because it's so nice to see an R&B singer with so much soul and so much swag and so much of a following still be a gentleman and still carry yourself as a God-fearing person. That is so attractive to me. In the after show, T-Pain and Tigger, they interviewed him and asked him about him crying in his acceptance speech. It was kind of annoying because I was just like, why is it even relevant how he accepts his award? Like, if he wants to run across the stage and scream, hell yeah, he has every right to do that. I don't think it was their intention to judge him 
by the way that he accepted it but I guess that we still live in a world where they think that it's weak for a man to cry why is it that as little girls we play with dolls and crying is a part of showing your emotions which is a positive thing but for guys it's a sign of weakness it's so unfortunate because you're basically teaching a little boy that when he's heard about something he has to find another way to let that out other than tears maybe that's why women are so much more mature than men obviously but August Alcina kind of covered it up and said even when he gets really angry if he starts to cry then that means he's probably gonna murder you which I think we can all relate to that favorite performance of the night John Legend oh my goodness his covers of Lionel Richie songs were absolutely amazing and him and Janae Aiko I loved them together can I just say Janae Aiko's outfit for the night absolutely amazing I don't know if you guys know but I'm a singer myself and that is the sort of look that I would go for in a performance. No shoes, just soul. Chris Rock, oh my god. His interviews with the Caucasian people from pretty much another world, hilarious. I couldn't get enough. Me and my sister were crying on the couch. He asked them to finish sentences, like start it from the bottom. Their responses were unbelievable. Like you literally could not write this. Sometimes do you ever think, does Chris Rock go too far? I mean, I was sitting on my couch literally feeling awkward and uncomfortable because of how he makes fun of people that are in the room. And I understand as a comedian you make fun of people, but it seems to always be touchy subjects. I'm sorry, I guess you have to take him with a grain of salt. I just felt so sorry for Paris Hilton. Already probably at an event that she's not as comfortable with as most of her events. And the last thing she needs is the host to make her feel less comfortable. But she kind of laughed it off. And I always think laughing at yourself is the best medicine. Kevin Hart. One word. Scandal. I loved it. <laughs> Him and Carrie Washington, the best announcers of the night. Nicki Minaj, absolutely gorgeous. I can't even tell you how googly-eyed I get every single time I see her without all that makeup on. I will say why... Would you have mushrooms and rabbits with a song like Pills and Potions? The lyrics of Pills and Potions is so deep and metaphoric, yet you're almost making a joke of the song. I don't know, I guess she still wants to kind of keep that balance of her signature and who she's become. But I say, totally cut it. You can have swag and be classy at the same time. What about the rumors that she was dissing Iggy in her acceptance speech? I didn't get that at all. She was just saying that when you hear her writing, you know that it's Nikki's lyrics. I was just thinking Iggy Azalea does sort of have that swag in the sense of not the way that she performs, but the way that she raps and how she speaks along with the beat. It is similar to Nikki, but people are going all the way saying that her body looks like Nikki, her gestures look like Nikki that she's basically the white version of Nikki. I totally think that that's impossible. If you consider yourself a legend or an icon or unique, which is one of a kind, then nobody can ever compare. And if she does remind you of Nikki, so what? It's free publicity. Everyone's gonna think of you. Who complains when someone says you dance like Michael Jackson? Nobody. At the end of the day, whether or not she did write the lyrics for Iggy, um, she got a nice check from it. You pretty much just invented a superstar. Props to Nikki. Have you guys heard her song, Looking Ass Nigga? That song actually has a good message in it. It's talking about how it's not attractive to have a man that does things illegally to get money or that doesn't treat his women with respect. She's basically saying she has requirements for her man and if he doesn't have those, then she needs to keep it moving. I love that song. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. Oh my goodness. So the biggest winner of the night, Lionel Richie, getting the Lifetime Achievement Award, his name was misspelled. I'm literally thinking, do we have interns working in the back? Like, this is embarrassing for me even. I feel like there's so many networks that are waiting for BET to fail or always kind of judging them and nitpicking at every little thing that they mess up on. Can we please get the spelling of the Lifetime Achievement Award winner's name right at least? Apparently it was only on the screen for like two seconds. But still, I think we need to do better. 
Last but not least, B and J weren't even there. Are you surprised? I'm not. J, Beyonce, Drake, it seems like all the heavy hitters in the African American entertainment community never go to the BET Awards anymore. I don't know what it is. Is the money not there? Is the budget not there? Instead, B and J pretty much just got a nice check for sending footage from the Miami concert of On the Run to BET and them airing it at the end of the BET Awards. I just thought it was a total mess. Like, who wants to see a video of them? We can go on YouTube and see footage from the Miami concert. Anywho, guys, just had to get all that off my chest. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you soon.